Chapter 2 involves a bunch of lines and a bunch of algebra. For those of you that uh, struggled yesterday on the algebra benchmark, uh, this chapter will help clarify some of the algebra that you need to survive in here. So let's start with a simple question. Let's start with a simple question. Let's start with a simple question. <laughs> Let me walk over here and hit the thing so we can see the simple question. The simple question is unseeable. <laughs> I'm distraught. Let's try that again. You got two lines. Those two lines can interact in three different ways. What are they? Max? They can intersect, which you may have seen when I had to click out of this because my slideshow wasn't working. They can intersect, correct. What is the intersection of two lines, Max? What kind of thing is it? Yeah, what kind of thing is it? When you got the two lines and they intersect, what's that intersection thing called? What is it? A what? Nope, that's an angle. A point. Can a line intersect at more than one point? No. Why not? Max? Oh, how weird is this? The maxes ended up next to each other. What other math out of these do we have? Oh, sorry. Back to you, Max. Both lines are only traveling one direction, so they can only um, intersect in one point. Are they traveling in one direction? Well, it's one of my favorite bands, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, each one, if they're not parallel. Um, Wait, uh, what's that word you used to? Parallel. I don't know what that word means. What is that word? What noise? You two train. They're doing uh, that little closet at the end of the hallway. They do uh, dental work for people that can't afford it. So they're doing it. Uh, there's a senior in there getting a filling replaced. It's only on the um, second Tuesday of every month. So if you, something happens, you know, like if you chip a tooth, you've got to wait until the second Tuesday of October to get it fixed. But they do a nice job. Yeah, those are the guys in brown shirts. You know how you see... Some of our janitors are in gray, some of our janitors are in white. You see the guys in brown, those are the dental uh, district. <laughs> we just call them the DDWs, it's the district dental workers. Where were we? What direction does a line travel? How many directions does a line travel? Just one? Just one. Which one? That's more than one. <laughs> a line, one line, yeah. travels in how many directions? It can travel in any direction. Not can, how many will it? Only one. Only one direction. So, it, yes? So you're both doing the same thing, but how many is that, Max? <laughs> So you, you're good with two? Yeah. What travels in one direction? Oh, array. Array. <laughs> array, correct. Good. But we're talking about lines here, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, so one thing is they intersect. What else can they do? They, can, they can be parallel. Parallel, meaning what? Um, what does that word mean? That's a new word for, how do you spell it, first of all? Um, By the way, your brain just grew. I don't know. I forgot. P A I R A L L J E L. The J is silent. Right. Pair to a uh, lels with a J in there because it's it's a, it has a, a Swedish origin. So there's a, it's got an umlaut over it, you know, an umlaut, you know, the two dot things. Like, 
heavy metal bands put in their name just so you yeah. think they're super cool. <laughs> oh, sorry, I spelled it wrong. Uh, P A R A double L E L. These two little guys here, which you would know as a backslash, are the symbol for parallel. Because again, we're mathematicians and we're lazy and we don't like to write things out, so we create a symbol for just about anything we can and or we abbreviate anything we can. It's been a long time since we talked about this, Kaylin. What, are, what, uh, what does the word coplanar mean? Like on the same plane. On the same plane, correct. That do not intersect. Where in this room? <laughs> Bella, do you see parallel lines? Two sides of a board are Say again, I didn't hear you. Two sides of the board are parallel uh, The sides or the sides? This will be really good on video. Either one. Either one, right? So this side... Even though it's a segment, if we extend this into a line, wouldn't intersect that other side. Yeah. Good. Anywhere else? Um, I mean, there's just a couple in here. Yeah. Right. Every line on the ceiling, the floor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Any idea on the third way that two lines can intersect? You probably don't know this one, and we won't get to it till second semester. So I'll just tell you. Skew lines. That's got to be a deep film. <laughs> Go right after that. One and two deal with a plane, which is what we do. Plane geometry, Euclidean geometry is on a plane. Skew has to deal with two-dimensional stuff. So if you look up here, skew lines would be something like this. Okay. Comes off of a plane. They don't intersect, but they're not in the same plane. We're going to focus on one and two. We get to three second semester when we talk about three dimensional stuff. Problem so far? Hot diggity. Let's deal with that puppy. A couple things going on in this picture. Camille, what do you see in that picture? extended those lines off into infinity to, they would never intersect. Maybe. There's actually a way in that picture that you can tell that they are parallel. You'll notice halfway down those lines, which is kind of a silly statement because since lines go on forever there really is no halfway, but you see those two little red things? Those are an extra set of arrowheads. That's how we denote parallel in a picture. Stick a couple extra arrowheads on there and you're good to go. All right, so back to you, Camille. I got two parallel lines there, and you said they were called E, G, and K, H. Yeah. Beautiful. What else do you see? Um, there's like F, J intersecting the plane. F, J intersecting the plane F at the point. Well, F, G, H, and J. Well, we could call that line a lot of different things, yeah. right? F, G, F, J, G, J, J, G, J, F. What do you want to call it? FJ, beautiful. So FJ intersects the plane at what point? G. G, and what's that point called? G. I know, but what's that point called where a line intersects a plane? Move your hand. Move your hand. The other hand. Move your right hand out of the way. What's that point called where a line hits a plane? Correct. Oh. <laughs> Why else would I just throw my mic up like that? All right, what else you got? Anything else? No. Two parallel lines. Two. Okay. What did like tree pose or something? Over back here? Just a I understand. It's just problems could get kind of crazy, so you want to be loosened up before you get into it. 
two parallel lines we got covered. Hey, uh, Camille, which lines are skew? intersects KH at that little point right there, does it? No, it intersects EG, doesn't it? Yeah. Even though it appears to intersect, it doesn't. We got a three-dimensional thing going on there because of that dashed portion. It's hidden behind the plane. Wow. Okay. Beautiful. Parallel skew intersecting. Are there any lines in this picture? No. no. Okay. So then, if we consider them only segments, we can have them intersect. But what if we extend those into lines? So, for instance, does the line BC, badger cat, intersect the line ED? Let me ask my question again. Does the line BC intersect the line ED? Yes. No. yes. Good. Does the segment BC intersect the segment ED? No. No, no, no. no, no. That's silly. That's silly. Uh, we talked about skew already. Which lines are parallel? Any parallel lines in that picture? No. Yeah. Doesn't look like it. How about the planes? First of all, how many planes in that picture? Six, correct. Five sides in the bottom. What shape is that bottom, by the way? Anybody know? Pentagon. It's a pentagon. Very good. And then we got planes intersecting. So a lot of intersecting planes going on. This front plane intersects the side plane. They all meet up at that point G. Anybody know what that figure is called? Nope. Pentagonal Prism. Nope. Pyramid. Pentagonal pyramid. All right. So now we're going to take two lines. We don't necessarily know that those lines are parallel. They could be, but they don't have to be. So those are the two black lines in the picture. Then we intersect them with a, with a third line, the red one. And that line is called the transversal. And as it says up there, when you do that, you generate eight different angles. And we're going to pair up some of those angles to get some new pairs of angles. However, we already know about a bunch of different pairs of angles. What are those pairs of angles we've already talked about? Anna, what do you got for me? Pairs of angles. Um, we talked about, um, I don't remember. Caitlin. That's one. Supplementary? Complementary? Keep going if you got them. Vertical. Adjacent. Adjacent. Missing one. Right. No, that's a type of angle, not a pair. Linear pair, correct. Oh. Yeah. So we had types of angles. Right, acute, obtuse, straight, zero. We've got pairs of angles. Vertical, adjacent, linear pair, supplementary, complementary. Today we're going to add to the list of pairs of angles. So these pairs of angles come out of this special scenario here. Two lines intersected by a third line called the transversal. First pair are called corresponding angles. They're called corresponding angles because they're in the same corresponding location around the points of intersection. OK, so when you're doing pairs of angles, try not to get hypnotized by the moving count. But if you take 
uh, point of intersection. So let's forget about angles 5, 6, 7, 8, and a 5, 6, 7, 8. Cover that up. And yes, I know I'm not really covering it up. If we just look at this point of intersection, that's where we get our first five pairs of angles. Right? You got vertical angles in that picture, you got linear pairs, you got adjacent, you got supplementary, maybe complementary, but we don't know that. In order to get the new pairs, you have to pick one from around here and one from around there. Okay. You can't take two from the top or two from the bottom. So the first two I highlighted with where the, uh, where the mooing cows are, are called corresponding angles because again, they're in the corresponding location. So notice the cow on top is in the upper left-hand corner. Therefore, its corresponding angle is going to be in the lower left-hand corner. Make sense? Caroline, where are the other corresponding angles then? Uh, two and six, four and eight, and three and seven. Perfect. Four pairs of corresponding angles. Any problems with that? We're good? Alternate interior angles, abbreviated AIA. Alternate means on opposite sides of the transversal. Interior means on the inside. So we've got a couple little stars there. Tommy, where's the other pair of alternate interior angles? Uh, four and five. Beautiful, four and five. Instead of me just clicking on the next slide, what kind of angles would 1 and 8 be, Kev? Alternate because they're on opposite sides of the transversal, exterior because they're on the outside, and angles. AEA. -E Highlighted with the creepy unicorns. I'm sorry? It could have. Yes. I could make it more boring if you'd like, Max. I could spend the entire period talking in this tone of voice and never alter from this. Today we are going to talk about parallel lines. Dana, okay, you have a question. How may I help you? What makes an interior or exterior? Excellent question, Dana. <laughs> if you look at both of these lines, the interior would imply that it is between the two lines, oh, okay. whereas the exterior would imply that it is on the outside. Okay, thank you. Good job, Dana. <laughs> Class, do you have any other questions before I proceed? Excellent. Allow me to press the button to move on. <laughs> oh, I forgot. There's some stuff at the bottom. <laughs> Kevin, I'm sure you're going to tell us that 2 and 7 would be the other alternate exterior angles. Am I correct? Yes. <laughs> Great job, Kevin. <laughs> you're going to go far. <laughs> I apologize for the festive fish. In the future, I will simply circle the angles because obviously that is way too much fun. And remember, learning is never fun. Consecutive it means next to each other, not adjacent, but consecutive. The following one. Interior means inside. I can't continue this, I'm sorry. <laughs> and angles, because they're angles. Okay. Where's the other pair? Sterling, before you throw your shoulder out. Four and six. Four and six. Well done. Okay, so notice so far, Corresponding angles are the only one that have four pairs. Every, uh, every other one that we've listed, AIA, AEA, CIA, have two pairs. Which one have I, we not covered yet? I don't know. 
Ivy? Consecutive exterior angles. And what fun little gifts do you think I use for consecutive exterior angles? Wouldn't it be weird if I just circled the angles? <laughs> I didn't. I, oh yeah, there's more stuff on it. I use walking alligators. <laughs> consecutive, same side of the transversal, exterior on the outside. Where's the other pair? Two and eight. Two and eight. How are we doing so far, kids? How many pairs is that? Four. Corresponding, five. alternate interior, alternate exterior, cor uh, CIA and CEA, five. So we're up to 10 pairs. Wow, that's a lot. Wow. And a little bit more at the end there, because we already got two and eight. My virus uh, definitions have shown up. Thank goodness for that. All right, let's look at an example. Took the same scenario. I don't want you to just memorize these angles by memorizing numbers. I'd like you to understand how you get each of them. So I relabeled the angles. Notice I relabeled the angles in a very incorrect manner, but it will simplify our process. Hey, it says nostril. Outstanding. It doesn't really. <laughs> It says Waja Saum. <laughs> but how weird is that? That it actually spells mouse jaw, and I just wanted to spell Waja Saum. <laughs> mouse jaw backwards is Waja Saum. Waja Saum backwards would be mouse jaw. Good, that's one pair, three more to go. What's the relationship? Uh, let's pick two of them. Uh, let's do OJ. What's the relationship between the angles O and J? They're corresponding. Good. What about their angle measures? Any relationship between the angle measures? They should be the same. They should be the same. They are not. 
They are the same. No. So the process we're going to go through here is I purposely didn't make these lines parallel. They're just two lines. They might be parallel, they might not be. In that picture, they certainly don't look like they're parallel. When the lines are not parallel, we have no idea about the relationship for those angles. However, tomorrow, we're going to change the rules a little bit and all of a sudden make those lines parallel. Then we'll come back and ask the same question. When they're parallel, then the rules change. Without them being parallel, we have no idea about the relationship of those angles. Okay.